Okay, so today I'm doing a video on a question I get asked a lot. You know, I just got asked a couple of times already in this past week you know, about it, so I figured I'd put something out. And then I wanted to give a shout out to Mark at the Retro Channel. Um, he put out a spectacular product called the Modulator Replacement um, a few years ago, and then he updated it, I think, um, earlier this year. A link to his YouTube channel is in the description. I highly recommend it. Great quality content, outstanding information, and uh, I hope you're disciplined with your time because you can easily spend a couple of hours on this channel. One of the things that I get asked a lot is how do I shoot HDMI out to my monitor, to my modern monitor? I know in Europe you have S card, HDMI, whatever, but in the US it's mostly HDMI, so I'm going to concentrate on that, on the HDMI piece. So there's two facets to this. There's getting the video out and there's also cleaning the video once you have it out. So let's start with the video out first. Okay. So most Commodores, this is your video output right here. Most Commodores have eight pins. Um, the early ones, the model, uh, what, 326, uh, 298, I think it is, um, had five pins. So the difference is the five pins only had a composite video channel, which is just made up of, you know, your luminance. Um, the eight pin, however, split up luminance and chrominance channels. So you have a cleaner picture, a much sharper picture. Okay, so it's a better quality picture. But I'm going to show you how to output both of them, five pin or eight pin, really, really easy. So let's get to that first. To output your video to HDMI, let's start with breaking it out first. And that's where this little puppy comes in. This thing is maybe 15 to 20 bucks, depending on where you get it, Amazon or eBay. Um, this is, the one I have here is made for eight pin, okay? And there is a five pin one also, if you have a five pin model. The difference is that the five pin won't have this S video output, okay? Um, it'll only have your composite video, your left and right audio, and your audio in. Very few times I've ever used the audio in. But, um, so that's the first, you know, if you have eight pin, you're gonna also have, like I said, your S video out. But hey, that is an HDMI, no, it's not. What we're doing right now is breaking out the signal, okay? So now that we have that broken out, okay, now you need a device to take that signal, to take those signals in and convert it to HDMI. And that's where this guy comes in. I'm showing you this because it's the most economical. I use something similar to this. It's a little more expensive. The black one, the little black one here is $17. The one I'm showing you on the screen here is 35. So um, the difference is that this more economical one has everything already um, wired in. Okay, but it's actually pretty cool. I'll, I'll explain why in a second. Um, so if you went the budget route, this is already, everything's already wired into it. And if you had the five pin model, all you'd have is the composite. So if you have the five pin model, the only thing that you would do is you would put a, plug your composite signal in or the composite lead in and that's it. Well, you'd also have your audio, sorry. Okay, okay, now, the Commodore is mono, it's not stereo, so, you know, <laughs> their dual audio isn't going to really give you anything beyond mono sound. Um, one of these isn't going to be used unless you bridge them and you can get fake stereo. Um, you can always go down the rabbit hole and create stereo SID, you know, stereo um, sound using uh, multiple SID chips or emulators or things like that. But that's for a different video. Right now, I'm just going to stick to the video portion, okay? So on the five pin, that's what you're going to have connected, okay? On the eight pin, you're also going to connect your S-Video to that as well, okay? And again, this is all part of the cable that already is attached to this device. So now that you have all of this hooked in, for this device, there is your HDMI output. Okay, you're just going to plug in your male, uh, your uh, yeah, your male to male cable HDMI cable in to your monitor, and that's it. What you're going to need for this is um, five volts, which is USB. Okay, and then you have the option of 720 or 1080. Okay, and then this will auto detect if you have both signals put in on your eight pin, it'll automatically detect. Um, your S video 
um, or your composite. The more expensive one, you can just choose it manually. This one here is the economical one will auto detect, but you can also just you know unplug one or the other <laughs> for it to find the right signal that you want if you want to force it to one or the other. But that's it. But I mentioned you got to plug in your ATMI cable. Well, for seventeen dollars on Amazon, and I'm not affiliated, so I'm, I'm I don't monetize. Um, you get your ATMI cable with it as well. And I said you need five volt power USB. Um, well, you also get a USB cable <laughs> with it as well. And to top it off, you also get a gender changer for your RCA jacks. Um, why? Because this unit can also be used on retro game consoles or DVRs or VHS machines for that matter, for whatever has a composite signal coming out of it, um, you can use this thing for. So that's the economical route to go. It's all of what, maybe 40 bucks for everything um, versus spending 250 for what the purists, because there's nothing wrong with that, what the purists spend for upscaling. But if you're not using your computer all that much and you're just using it for a few games here and there, I don't think you want to go spend more than what you spend on your computer um, just to convert video, right? So for 40 bucks or so, here you go. You have a full conversion, whether it's five pin or eight pin and you're done, okay? So that's my recommendation. Everybody has a recommendation based on their use, but I don't see spending more than $40 or $50 to convert your signal. All right, so there's that. Okay, so now that you've got the video signal that you want to, through HDMI, um, it may not be as clean as you like. It might have jail bars or the, it might have color bleeding or it's not very you know, sharp, whatever. So now you can clean up the video in several ways. Um, one of them is Adrian Black's system. If you have a modulator that looks like this, um, a link to his video is in the description. Um, if you have some soldering skills, you can basically eliminate a couple of the capacitors. I'm just changing the filtering a little bit in this unit itself to clean up the picture. So you can clean it up on the modulator side. There's two basic forms of cleaning the signal up. One is where it's um, actually uh, constructed, which is on the VIC chip, um, or um, fixing it on the modulator side after it comes out of the VIC chip. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Then there was all these other iterations. You know, there was the Luma fix. You know, which basically you put on, you took the VIC chip out and you pop this in, put the VIC chip on top, and you had the trim pots here um, for you to uh, filter out the, lumin on, the, the luminance and make the picture um, cleaner this way. And this only replaced, well, this was done on the VIC chip side, not on the modulator side. And you had another one that was very similar, um, handled the cleansing on the VIC side, um, and you can also replace the modulator at this point, you know, with this guy, make it a lot simpler, a lot cleaner, and eliminate a lot of the noise. So there's that way. Then it got more complex. Copper Dragon solution here was an exceptional solution. You know, it um, handled the quality control at the VIC chip and it also um, uh, replaced the modulator and cleansed the signal up there and gave you component output and HDMI output as well. But this was a, just a little bit more complex. Okay. And then we get almost to what we want to talk about. Then there was Mark at the Retro Channel, um, his solution here, which is basically. Um, replacing the modulator and then handling some of the filtering, you know, almost like the Luma fix, you know, you had your filters here um, and basically you had your S video output here. Um, this also um, worked, I, I believe this one worked also, no, I think this newest version worked with the Kawari. I'm not sure about this one. This is his first version and it's not what we want to end up talking about anyways, but nonetheless, this was a really good, you know, um, version and it basically, I, I eliminated all the rest of the solutions opting for this one for a while when he came out with this. It was easy to build. Um, the parts were easily sourced except for the S video, which was a pain in the butt to find. You can only get that on AliExpress. Um, but uh, you can build this yourself and, you know, probably cost all of 20 bucks, maybe 25. Um, so, you know, this was a good solution. But what I want to give a shout out to is Mark's later version that came out earlier this year, which is a lot different, as you can see. He eliminated the uh, manual potentiometers, the trim pots here, you know. Um, he improved the filtering. 
Um, again, the S video is still a pain in the butt. <laughs> That's not his fault. <laughs> but um, nonetheless, again, this is, you know, all of to build it yourself, maybe 15 bucks um, um, for sourcing the parts. You know, the only thing is you have to go to PCB way and you have to wait for the board and all that other stuff. But if you're not um, or technically inclined to build it yourself, then you can go to his Tindy store and get them already built. The link is in the description. Um, not sure how much it costs there, but I'm in the US. I use a gentleman on eBay. His name is Amano2112. I'll leave a link in the description of his eBay store. I'm not getting paid for it, for this, you know, for mentioning this, but um, he did send me the latest board, even though I had already built one. He, he did send me this latest board because he wanted me to look at the quality of his builds, um, you know, because he's putting this out, you know, to the public already built. So that's what I'm doing here in conjunction with my video. Um, the build quality that he has is really, really well done. Um, the parts are, like I said, they're not that hard to source out. But um, what seems like a simple build um, to spend uh, like 5 or $10 more to have someone else do it for you, I think is worth the time. It's worth the investment for the time that you're going to save. Um, it comes already with uh, the jumpers and, and all this other stuff already you know, with the board as well. Um, let me see what else he included with this comes with the board. Yeah, here you go. Um, so anyways, a shout out to him for building these things. Um, if you're in the U.S., uh, you could get yours relatively quick already built. And again, I'm not getting paid for that endorsement, but I like to help folks out, um, you know, especially if they're doing a really good job. And I've gotten a couple of these boards from him already that I've paid for early on um, before he sent me this one to look at. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Link is in the description. But anyways, so bottom line, let's take a look and see how this cleans up the signal. Let me show you the before and the after for this. Um, again, the links to all of this, look in the description, tons of links there to all sorts of different stuff in there for the video filtering that I think you'll enjoy. And hopefully you get some value out of it. All right. So stay tuned. Let me show you the befores and afters. And then um, one one last thing I wanted to point out, there is a capacitor on here. If you still have JL bars with this, um, well, first of all, this comes in three different forms. Um, this comes for the long board, the short board, and for the um, C128 DCR, which is the one that I was, the, the ones that I built, because I have a bunch of DCR, 128 DCRs. The difference between the longboard and the DCR one is just that the DCR, the pins are in different places, so you need a longer board. So it's just the board um, makeup that's different, but the parts and everything is the same. So, um, and then there is a filter here, um, a capacitor here. I'll put it in, well, I'll put it in the video when I show you the before and after, which capacitor you may want to, you know, fumble around with different values because that also helps with the jail bars. If you still have some jail bars after putting this in with the stock um, components in there, I think it's C9. I don't want to guess. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it in the video. All right. So stay tuned before and after summary, and then we're out of here. Okay. So I think we're ready to roll here. I got my V2 board in. Um, easy flash. We're ready to turn this thing on and see if we, we, we've improved our video. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, which is really cool about this board that I might not have mentioned earlier, is the switch here on the side. So this is a stereo jack, a three and a half millimeter stereo jack. Okay, so S video doesn't have sound, so you need to get the sound out of here. Um, and that's what the left channel is. But the right channel here can be configured in one of three ways. You can either have it be um, the composite video, which is what I have it as now, or you can make it the right hand uh, channel sound, um, which the Commodore doesn't really have, <laughs> um, or you can make it an external um, input. So these two jumpers here is your external input. So if I had some contraption that's sending uh, sound or that's sending video, whatever, um, I can shoot it out through these two pins here and just choose that um, with the slider here, which is really cool. And uh, the other thing is um, you have this, um, this trimmer here that controls the contrast on the screen, so that can help with some of the clarity. And then C1 here is interesting because um, it's set at, oh, what, 820 picofarads. So if you increase this to 1,500 to 2,000 picofarads, um, that might also help with some jail bars. It'll smooth out the screen a little bit um, more, but it might help if you have a really bad effect with jail bars on your, on your screen. So you may want to um, mess around with C1 a little bit. But all right, 
that's all the commentary I got. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. All right. Well, it looks a heck of a lot nice. Not nicer. Um, I'll explain why. Um, but it's really, it's, it's a, it's, it has improved the screen um, a bit compared to what it was. Um, and the reason part of it is uh, the screen was already kind of clean um, because you see here, I already have an R8, um, a really good version of the VIC-2 in there. So um, th that's that's thing. So why don't we do this just, you know, just to check it out. Let's take out this VIC R8 version and put in a very early one of these ceramic versions that always give me a lot of a lot of noise and a lot of jail bars and everything. And let's see what that does, shall we? Okay, I got this older older chip here that most of the original boards have. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see what happens. Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, it's almost as nice as the R8 chip was, um, if not just equal. Um, it really, I wish I would have taken this before with this um, ceramic chip because these, I don't really like to use them because they just give me a lot of bad artifacts on the screen. But in this case, um, this really got cleaned up. So that's um, that's pretty cool. All right. So there you have it. Um, I hope you got something out of this. I Like I said, I really wanted to give a shout out to, to Mark at the Retro Channel. Make sure you visit his page, man. You're going to spend some time there. It's really cool stuff there. And I also wanted to thank um, Amano2112. That's his eBay name. Um, for um, having stock all the time. You know, I've gotten several of these boards from him. I'm not making any money by shouting out to him here, um, but I wanted to do him that favor. He sent me this to take a look at the quality of the new boards he's um, building now because these are in the public domain. Um, PCBWay has the uh, the boards, and, then it, um, and Mark's also put out the bill of materials which people like Mark are just amazing to be able to do this kind of stuff and put it out in public domain for you to build. And, uh, you know, just purchasing it already assembled from his site um, on Tindy, if you're um, outside the U.S., um, or even if you're in the U.S., I guess, if you want to wait for it. Um, but if you're in the U.S., um, the link to um, a Mono 2112 is also in the description, and you can get them already assembled from him as well. All right. So there you have it. Hope you got something out of this. Um, so if, like I always say, you know, you only live once, live for today. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. All right. Um, be sure to check out my next video. It's going to be pretty interesting. Let's put a GoTech on a Commodore. How about that? All right. Peace out.